Hello, I'm JW, and in this particular episode it's yellow book time, as in this particular yellow book, which replaces the surprisingly similar book previously, which was green, and of course the one before it was red, and so on. But uh, the point is the new edition of the Warren Regulations has now been published, which of the 1st of January, and this is still the 17th edition, as it says on the front there, but of course this has the up-to-date amendments included in it, as you can see at the top corner there. And uh, there are a number of changes in here which we'll have a quick look at. Of course, there are plenty of those just uh, minute uh, piffling alterations to various bits of text which change nothing, but uh, there are one or two things which do change a lot of things and are certainly of uh, particular importance. Now, uh, although this has been published uh, this particular month, uh, January 2015, the uh, changes in here don't actually come into effect until the 1st of July 2015. Uh, except one particular regulation inside, which uh, doesn't come into effect until the 1st of January 2016, so nearly a year away. And it's that particular one which we're going to have a look at in a bit of detail. Now this is the publication here, and as it says on the front here, issued in uh, 2015, Amendment 3. And this is what you're supposed to use when uh, installing or designing any electrical installations for use in the UK, and everything that's installed should actually comply with all of the stuff that's contained within. Of course, in reality, there's plenty of people that uh, don't even know this exists, and uh, quite frankly, even if they did, would be uh, incapable of actually understanding it. So in the real world, of course, uh, plenty of things don't comply with this. Uh, this isn't legally binding. However, if you're going to do things properly, then uh, it's pretty much the uh, standard that's required to be used. So uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. Now, uh, this particular one is, uh, say, Amendment 3, and it's a yellow cover. The previous one was, of course, Amendment 2, which uh, we didn't actually have a cover because it was a uh, separately printed item. And the one prior to this was green, which was the uh, Amendment 1, and the previous one prior to that was actually red, and then there was a brown one, and so on. So nice uh, yellow cover for this one. And it's now up to uh, almost 500 pages, uh, 496 there, including the index, which in itself takes up a considerable number of pages there. And uh, the uh, changes in these, as with previous ones, are marked just in the margin here, where you've got these little vertical lines indicating that something's changed between this one and the previous edition, and that may be things that have been added, or things that have been changed, or in some cases, things that have been deleted, or as we've got here, some stuff that's actually been moved to a different section. And a lot of the changes are fairly minor, and not particularly uh, worthwhile going through in this video. Obviously we could spend hours on this if we wanted to, but uh, of course uh, we're not going to be doing that. And if you uh, are that bothered about the change as well, you should uh, get your own copy and uh, look through it yourself. Now one change in this one, it has a nice hologram inside the front cover. It's a sticker that's sort of stuck there, though. presumably so we indicate that it's the uh, genuine item and not some fake one that was bought on eBay for a quarter of the price. And yes, these things uh, do exist in fake form. This is a fairly uh, costly publication. This one uh, is generally about 70 or 80 pounds. So uh, certainly not a trivial purchase. And uh, But of course, if you buy the fake one, then uh, who knows what could be contained inside, so uh, obviously we're using the proper one here. Now the two things which are uh, of particular importance are uh, this chapter 41, which is the uh, generally protection against shock, and uh, the first part is to do with RCDs. They're essentially now required on all socket outlets up to 20 amps, whereas previously there were certain situations where you didn't need them, and this is all to do with this, uh, what's now been deleted, the ordinary persons and instructed persons and all that rubbish. So that's all gone, and now it's basically uh, all of the socket outlets will require RCD, so fairly sensible. And uh, the other point here is this C-min factor, which uh, is basically a correction factor, as it says here, and it's designed to uh, take into account uh, voltage variations depending on the uh, sort of supplier's transformer and temperature and so on. And the factor is actually 0.95, and the upshot of this is that the uh, regulations here and all of these tables listed, which is the uh, maximum loop impedance, all those values have now changed, so of course uh, they're actually lower than they were before. And the tables in question are these ones, so that's the uh, maximum of earth fault loop impedance here, that's for uh, various types of fuses, and of course over here a similar situation for various circuit breakers, and again there's another one over here for uh, fuses as well. So essentially all of the figures in these tables have now been uh, altered, as I said here there's now a factor of 0.95 being determined on these, so Essentially all of the figures here have been reduced. Now it's not particularly likely that existing circuits are going to be affected because uh, for that to have happened the uh, circuit would have had to be in very marginal anyhow. And of course, uh, say going down from say a factor of 1 to 0.95 is a very small change. But nevertheless uh, the values have altered so of course uh, the new values need to be used 
when actually doing new circuits. Now we'll come to the one which uh, is going to cause uh, the most problem, and this is uh, chapter 42, which uh, essentially considers, uh, as it says here, there's a new section about overheating. It's fine. And there's a new regulation for 21.1.201, and this is the one which is going to cause trouble. Now here is the actual uh, regulation itself, uh, it's 421.1201, and it's, this is all new, or oh, it's actually all totally been added rather than changed. And we've got uh, within domestic or household premises, consumer units and similar switch gear assemblies, so basically anything that's got circuit breakers or switches or anything else in it, shall comply with uh, BSEN 614.393 and shall have their enclosure manufactured from non-combustible material, important uh, phrase there, or be enclosed in a cabinet or enclosure constructed of non-combustible material, and complying with regulation 13212. Now 13212 is simply the one that uh, essentially means that there's proper space to actually install and uh, maintain and replace various items, so uh, nothing too surprising with that. And uh, We've got a couple of notes here, which uh, is always a bad sign on these regulations when they find it necessary to put uh, explanatory notes underneath. Uh, note one, ferrous metal, example steel, is deemed to be an example of a non-combustible material. And notice that's the only example that they're giving. So uh, metal, basically, not plastic. And although there may be non-combustible plastics, the uh, problem, of course, is that how do you actually determine that? And as we saw before, the implementation date for this regulation is the 1st of January 2016, so nearly a year away. But of course, uh, it does not preclude compliance with the regulation prior to that date, so uh, obviously you can uh, comply with this thing uh, straight away if you wanted to. Now the problem here is that most consumer units installed in domestic premises in the last uh, several decades have been made of plastic of various types, and clearly uh, they are not going to comply with this because it's fairly likely that they're not going to be uh, a non-combustible material, and the problem is really you can't actually test existing equipment to see if it's non-combustible or not, other than getting a fag light or something and uh, see if it sets on fire, and of course that's uh, not practical as you'll uh, end up destroying the place. And although it implies that non-combustible material might include other plastics for example, or uh, other materials out unspecified, the reality is that consumer units are made of plastic or metal, and it's going to go down the metal route. And of course it's put this uh, metal example in here, which uh, is pretty much basically saying that uh, it's going to be metal or bust. Now the issue with metal consumer units is that they are considerably more expensive than plastic ones, and they also take longer to install because it's not just a question of uh, poking out one of the uh, plastic bits on the back to get the cables in. You'll either have to uh, remove one of the laughingly called knockouts on there, assuming it's got any, or more likely uh, drill holes and things as appropriate and then put the appropriate uh, grommets or bushings or whatever around the holes, and obviously then uh, fit it on the wall. And another question of course arises if you're going to go and do a uh, inspection on an existing installation, and if you find there's a plastic consumer unit, which is a very likely scenario, how do you determine whether it's actually made of non-combustible materials or not? Well obviously if it's made of metal it's not going to be combustible, but of course if it's plastic there's really no way to tell you could possibly ask the manufacturer, but uh, the chances are you're not going to get very far with that, particularly if it's an older model, say uh, 10, 15 years old or whatever. And short of setting it on fire, there's really no way of actually knowing whether it's going to be non-combustible or not, which of course uh, implies that the majority of older installations are not going to comply, simply with the fact that they're probably not made of non-combustible material, and even if they were, there's no real way of actually checking this or uh, even confirming it with anybody. So non-combustible consumer units. This, of course, probably means metal. Wilex, for example, already have issued their catalogue for this year, and it's full of metal consumer units. No surprise it's there. No plastic to be found. And it's fairly likely other manufacturers will do likewise. And, of course, the existing stocks of plastic consumer units to be found all over the country are no doubt going to be flogged off at low prices. So in the very near future, when you see vast amounts of plastic consumer units being given away, I strongly recommend you do not buy one of those, because uh, it's not going to comply in the very near future. And although in theory you could install it today and it would comply with the uh, current set of the regulations, it's a bit of a shabby thing to do to install something which you knowingly is not going to comply, say, in a few weeks or a couple of months' time. So uh, we'll see uh, where this uh, non-combustible route leads, but uh, I can't imagine it's going to end well. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.